Hello, thank you for tuning into my channel. We're on block six of the beginner sampler quilt and our block today is the Roman Tees. So if you want to see how to make this block, please stay tuned. I'm really excited to continue the beginners quilt sampler series. In this um, quilt sampler, we are making blocks that are uh, using squares and rectangles to create uh, nine patches or nine blocks that we're going to uh, quilt to put together into a larger quilt. So far, we have made five blocks, and so today we're going to work on the sixth block. And I am using the Block a Day book for my inspiration. This is a, a quilting book by Lucinda Ganderton, and it has 365 quilt blocks that you can use uh, to create a quilt. Um, I am adjusting these blocks just a little bit. The block size in the book is 12 inches finished, but we are making blocks that are 16 inches finished so we can have a little bit bigger quilt. Now, the blocks that we've used so far um, like I said before, they are using squares and rectangles, and today is no different. We're going to be using or creating the Roman Tees block right down here. And I zoomed in a little bit so you can get a closer look on the, um, on the pattern or on the, the block to see what it looks like. And we're going to go ahead and get ready to prepare it. To make this block, I'm going to use four contrasting fabrics, and I have them here. And we really, from each fabric, we only have to cut three pieces. So let me pull everything together and we'll get started. Here's another look at the block in the book. And you'll see it's called Roman Tees and it's making four tees here. And so I, that's why I'm going to use the four contrasting fabrics. Let me show you what I have here. Just like in the book, I chose three, I mean, two grays and then two um contrasting colors so i have these two as my grays one and then two and then i also have two darker blues that i've chosen as well so here's one and here's the other one now the cool thing for this block is that we only need three pieces we're going to cut two four and a half inch squares and one four and a half by eight and a half inch rectangle. And that's all we need from all of the colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these on camera so that you can see them. I am gonna speed up the video. The first one is, um, it's actually a with a fabric piece and I'm using my shape cut ruler here. Where does it say shape cut? <laughs> up here. Can you see it? Yep. There's my shape cut ruler, and I'm just going to, um, I'm putting the, let me zoom out just a little bit. So I'm putting the zero line at the bottom fold of my fabric, and then the, um, and so the rest of it lines up. And the cool thing about the shape cut is that it does have um, slits for all of the cuts. So here we go. I'm a lefty and the camera is sort of in my way, so please be patient with that. So I'm holding my ruler down, cutting at zero. And since I'm cutting four and a half inch strips, I'm gonna go to the four and a half inch line and cut there too. And I'm actually, because of the way this camera is situated, I'm gonna go one more time on the zero line just to make sure I got it. All right, and then from here, I'm going to open the fabric out. Okay. And then I'm gonna lay my, um, the zero line at the bottom. I'm gonna line it up with the, uh, the bottom of the fabric. I'm gonna cut the, selvage off and then I'm going to cut four and a half again that's going to give me my two squares let me show you that here are my two squares because it was folded and then I'm going to open it out and get my eight and a half inch rectangle 
This time I'm lining up um, the edge of the fabric here with that first slit and again lining up the bottom and I'm cutting the eight and a half inch here. All right, so I have my two four and a half inch squares and then my four and a half by eight and a half inch rectangle. And I'm going to continue that on um, the other three pieces. I will speed up the video now so that you can see it. Now that I have all my pieces for the block, I'm going to lay it out. I'm actually going to use the book to help me um, lay this out. They actually have the grays at the top of the block and at the bottom of the block. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the rectangle and the rectangle goes in the center and then a matching square goes on the end and then the other square goes so you can kind of see there's the T okay and then on the opposite side is the other gray so I'll start I'll make it backwards here's the that bottom square and then the rect the other square is kind of at a diagonal and then the rectangle is directly on top of the square all right, and then you can see there's just places for me to fill in. And so it doesn't matter what order I use as long as all of the colors are the same in the T. So here we go. same thing over here and here and here okay so now it's time for us to sew this together I'm gonna move the camera so that you can actually watch me um, sew it and then we will um, talk about the pressing so now that I have everything laid out I'm going to start stitching and I'm actually gonna start with these center four squares so I'm gonna flip this blue square over to the gray square take it to my sewing machine and we have uh, just like always a quarter inch seam allowance I'm just lining the fabrics up to make sure that they're gonna line up nicely okay and then I'm going to go ahead and stitch these two together and the um, the book says to press the seams open but I prefer to press them to one side. So I'm actually gonna press toward the dark side of the fabric or the dark side of the seam allowance. I'm gonna go to the next, um, the gray square, place it right sides together with this blue square. And then I'm going to stitch these two together. And I'm hoping for a really great quarter inch seam allowance. If it's not completely perfect, I'll be okay. Um, but the more accurate you are the better or the more consistent you are the better okay sometimes our machine does this where it doesn't want to take more than one stitch at a time So now I'm going to uh, cut that first piece off and you could uh, go to the iron and press, but I'm not going to press it yet until I'm all done with the block. So I'm just going to flip it back and then I'm going to finger press that seam allowance toward the blue. And I'm just running my finger now along it to um, line it up. 
Now, normally I would have another piece that I would be um, stitching off or onto, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this piece off and, um, and go ahead and press it. Again, pressing toward the dark side. So for my purposes, the dark side is the blue. Okay. All right, now that I have these two pieces, I'm going to flip the top down toward the bottom. Okay. And then I'm going to line these up and stitch them. I want these two seam allowances to nest. I want them to, um, to oppose so that there's not a lot of bulk there. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm holding the thread so that it doesn't, um, so that the my fabric doesn't get kind of eaten or uh, dragged down into the, the needle hole. All right, and I'm just holding my, um, I'm just kind of holding my seams together here. Okay, so that when it get when the when they get together, they won't um, come apart. Right, and then I just line up the ends and complete the seam. Okay. And now while I have that there, I will go ahead and do some chain piecing. The next thing that we need to do is put this whole top row together and the whole bottom row together. So I, again, I'm gonna press, um, I'm gonna press all of the top seams to the right I'm gonna press all the bottom seams to the right as well. Well, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. I'm gonna press these seams out. So this one's gonna go out, this one's gonna go out. Nope, just kidding, I'm gonna press them in. I don't know yet, let me, let me figure it out. So I'm gonna put the rectangle on top of the square here and line it up. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and pull my four patch off. Now for this um, seam, the seams aren't, aren't going to um, oppose anything because they're going to attach to rectangle, so we don't really have to worry about bulk. But I am going to um, I am going to open it out a little bit here so that there's less bulk in the center. And all I did was I pushed this this seam up and this seam down. And inside of it, there's a little now there's a little four patch here. I'm just gonna smush it down. And then I'll when I um, press it, I'll make sure to to press that seam real good. So that make that will make that hopefully nice and flat once we have everything together. So my four patch is done. For the uh, for the sake of chain piecing, I'm going to add this seam next. So I'm pulling the rectangle on top of that blue square. Okay, and I have decided what I want to do with my seams. So for the top and bottom rows, I'm gonna press the seams in toward the center. So they're gonna go towards the rectangle. So here I have my top two, and I'm just gonna press that seam allowance toward the rectangle with my fingers. Okay, and so it's gonna be the same thing here. Um, right now I have the uh, gray the bottom row on the machine. I'm going to finish out the top row here Okay. This block seems to be very simple to put together. I really like it 
and I, I can see it in a lot of different colorways and um, see it like edge to edge on a quilt. It would be so cute in all of the scrap fabrics and even in a, um, in a smaller block like the 12 and a half inch block in the book. I love that. But you can also see it in like a um, in like an eight and a half inch block, something that where it would be pretty small. All right. So again, pressing towards the rectangle here. So pressing towards the gray. All right. And then adding this um, other rectangle here. Make sure it's right side. Okay. is towards the um the rectangle so now it goes towards the gray all right so i have one row done the other row is going to be finished on the um it's on the under the needle right now now i'm going to uh stitch the middle row and all i'm going to do is i'm going to push the um i'm going to put the four patch on top of the blue on the left stitch it down And then I'm going to tell you in just a minute why I chose to press the outside rows, why I chose to press that seam toward the rectangle. Um, that's going to be important in just a second. And so all I'm doing is lining up the, um, I'm just going to line up the bottom. Hopefully my seam allowance was good enough and it's going to, um, it's going to match and it doesn't quite match. I'm just going to pull it and hold it and hope for the best here. I will have to go back and cut those threads, but that's okay. Okay. And let me pull the, um, the other one off. Pressing toward the rectangle. All right. So there we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and finish this one. Uh oh. Here. Okay. So this was the one on the left. And right here, I'm also going to press toward the rectangle. Let's see it there. And I have one more seam to do and then we're going to sew our rows together. So here we go. Right sides to right sides. Okay. And I just saw a mistake that I made. I want to share it with you so you can know what to do if you have a mistake like this one hold the bottom here. I'm still kind of hoping for the best on my seam allowance. going to press towards the rectangle again. All right, so now I have three rows. I want to I want to show you my small mistake that I made on the back here. I had this seam allowance going up here, but then when I stitched it together, it went down. I am just going to do a little snip here. 
in the seam allowance, not quite to the threads, or not through the threads, but up to them. And then that way it can go, it can just lay how it wants to lay. Okay, so when I press it, it'll, it'll bend it into submission, hopefully. All right, so now it's time to uh, stitch the rows together. And I'm going to start with the bottom row here. It doesn't matter where we start, but this is why I chose to press towards the rectangle. It's because I wanted to give these two seams a chance to nest. So the top seams are going, um, in this case, the top seams here are going in. The bottom seam is going out. And so I'm just going to stitch these together, being mindful of these two seams, making sure that they nest, and hopefully they'll line up as I sew them. Okay. And actually, I'm going to uh, speed up the camera on this here, and then I'll do the, the bottom row, and then I'll do the top row, and then our block will be done. block right here I'm going to press it and then I will um, put it with all the other blocks in our series so here is the block the Roman tees block I'm gonna turn it this way I like it a little bit better this way and I'm ready to put it up on the wall with our other blocks we have the four plat patch the nine patch the checker square we have the keyboard block we have fields of green and now we have Roman tees so let's put this up and I think it's going to be good in the quilt. One thing that I tried to do was I wanted to add a fabric that was already used. And so this one here is in the checker square block. So hopefully um, it'll give some continuity to the uh, quilt. There are three blocks left that I want to do. I haven't decided what they are yet, but I'm looking forward to seeing what else I can find in this block a day book. If you have any questions about what you've seen in the video, please leave them below. Thumbs up this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!